Hello, this is Brian O'Haran at my new time slot at 8 p.m. on Thursday evenings. Uh, Mr. J. Buddy Hazy will be taking over my other time slot at 8 o'clock on Friday evening. So for at least the next 13 weeks, I'll be here in, uh, and I'll be with you, uh, weather permitting, etc. Uh, tonight I'm joined by my friends from the Northwestern Connecticut Community College here in Winstead, which is an excellent uh, place and highly, in my opinion, under, underutilized for, uh, by the uh, people in the town and the state. Anybody from the town and the state can utilize this uh, uh, library at the, at the college down here in Winstead, and there's plenty of facilities there. There's a uh, full staff of librarians there that can help you out with all kinds of needs and uh, with uh, information, advice, and even how to use the computers and where to find things in the, in the university. A uh, very, very good uh, group of people and very helpful, and I spent quite a bit of time down there uh, during the week. Their hours are pretty much from 8.30 to 9.30 on most weekdays during when school's in session. They're also open on Saturday. Uh, I guess Friday, I think Friday they close a little earlier at 4.30. And then on Saturday they're open from 9.30 to 4.30, so and closed on Sunday. So if you, you are, you should go down there. I encourage everybody that's uh, open free of charge to everybody in the state and everybody in the community, and there's plenty of uh, uh, information down there. A lot of books, CDs, DVDs, computers, all kinds of periodicals. They can get, they uh, subscribe to things uh, on the uh, computers and everything. So up-to-date software, you'll really like it. Well, today is a big day for me because <clears throat> having been involved now for, you know, 23 or 4 weeks, uh, I promised that uh, I would do a quarterly review once every quarter of the selectman's progress uh, during the year as we go along. And this is the end of the first quarter. They were elected on November 6, 2007. Uh, today's February, uh, uh, I'm going to go to February 4, 2008, because that was their last selectman's meeting. And what I did is, everything on this uh, show today, program today, will be facts. And uh, they'll be off by, I say, well, about 1% because you know, nobody's perfect. I'm a human being just like everybody else. But I did my homework, and I always do my homework. As I said, it takes me 40, 50, 60 hours sometimes to prepare for this program. It doesn't come. I don't just walk in and do the show. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of preparation and a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, um, 
you know, losing sleep uh, to be able to put these together. So what I did is I went down to the town clerk, and you can do the same, and I got copies of all the minutes of all the meetings, uh, selectman meetings between November 6th and November 4th. I have them all right here. And what I did was I took all the information from there, all exactly as it's worded in these uh, documents, and I sorted it into four categories. Uh, it's actually five categories, but four categories. The first is uh, uh, revenue, because that's the most important thing we need to concentrate on. Number two is cost savings. Number three is uh, tax uh, uh, issues. And then number four, I put in a potpourri item called expediting the solution, which is all the uh, things they talked about on the agenda to expedite the solution. Uh, uh, to, uh, to, you know, I, I want you to know that we're making an assumption here that everybody wants to have a well-balanced uh, community in a well-balanced town. Nobody wants it to be uh, behind, so that we have a fairly state-of-the-art education system and facilities for the children and for the senior citizens and everybody. So that's always an assumption I make when I do this kind of thing. So uh, please understand that. Now, I also want to point out before I start that Jay Buddha Hazy's taken over my slot. I think I might have mentioned that, but uh, and he's on at eight o'clock with around Winstead. That's the program where he goes out around Winstead and takes pictures of all the people at work and play, and uh, it's a very positive program, so maybe you want to tune into that at 8 o'clock on Friday, Friday evening. Um, now, uh, first thing I want to go over are the major campaign promises. Now, I did contact each party with, uh, th with information. I sent them emails, the leaders, and I said, here's what I'm going to be going over on my show and, uh, and for my quarterly review, and I asked for comments back. I did get some feedback from one of the parties. I didn't get any from the other, but anyway, these are my view of what they promised, taking it out of newspapers and listening to programs, and uh, they may be uh, not uh, what everybody, what everybody uh, wants to see. First, I think I better show you the agenda. If I made the comments, campaign promises are going to be next, then the quarterly review, uh, which is a lot of stuff, so I'll show you that. And then I got some statistics I prepared from this quarterly review of the selectmen's meeting. So. Um, uh, I will go over the statistics with you and show how people voted on various issues by those categories I mentioned. So major campaign promises from the Democrats, promote the energy conservation, that's a big one that Renzullo was pushing uh, during the uh, uh, pre-election time and in after and post-election time. Promote new bond issue, they were big on promoting the bond issue before the election. Of course the bond issue didn't, uh, uh, you know, didn't uh, uh, succeed. So. Uh, they lost on that one pretty big time. Promote new bond issue for the town and school improvements. Uh, the, uh, the current selection are still going to work on that, but not quite the way the bond issue had wanted to, not as much as they wanted to spend and not, a, not do the work according to their priorities. So that, will, that was part of their, uh, uh, their promise. The other was to promote conservation in the town and the lake and um, they're still interested in that, I'm sure. Promote improvements around the town parks and along Main Street. I'm sure they're still interested in that. And uh, again, they had on there, I guess I got it on here twice, promote the new bond issue. So that's as far as the Democrats. So we'll take that into consideration as we go through here this evening. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, Republicans are concerned, uh, their first priority was definitely revenue. They wanted to uh, improve getting revenue into town because we know the uh, last two town managers, not the one in the interim now, I, uh, but the two before him, both mentioned to me that, Brian, this town needs revenue and we don't concentrate enough on the revenue. So the revenue is very important. When I did my own statistics, of course, I produced papers that show loud and clear that we're in the soup for quite a while here unless we can get some new um, additional uh, uh, taxpayers into town that will help us and uh, preferably uh, new taxes that are profitable to the town and don't cause the town more burden than, than the uh, taxes they pay. So we have the revenue, facilitate, encourage responsible, balance, balance development. Everybody wants development. We want the revenue to come in. We want it to be responsible and balanced and pass through all the land use boards and do things in a positive way that's good for everybody. Uh, we want to promote economic development for new and existing businesses, um, including the corridor, and uh, get new businesses in the town that give jobs and also promote things. That was one of the uh, promises. Property taxes, we want uh, responsible tax management. That's going to be difficult 
for the next five years without this revenue coming in, and uh, it's going to be very difficult. So uh, that's one of the promises, though, and that's the things we're going to be watching. Uh, we want to increase the net grant list, uh, profitable uh, uh, net grant list profitably, encouraging the addition of new taxpayers in a balanced manner. Uh, the current taxpayers, just by having revals, that doesn't help us too much. Uh, what we need are new taxpayers that will add to the tax base, and then we can use that money to help um, solve some of our, our problems and to grow. Uh, charter revision was one of their major uh, issues. Uh, consider a mayoral form of government uh, on the charter revision. And then on the infrastructure, they wanted to update the town and school buildings where necessary in an economic way. That's kind of their answer to the bond issue. Uh, still do the work, do it over uh, a period of years in, in the most economical way practical. Um, move the responsibility of maintaining the school buildings to the town. That was one of their campaign promises. Provide a full-time rec director uh, as soon as we can afford it. Uh, provide a full-time fire marshal and, uh, uh, and a full-time building inspector. So um, that's what they wanted to do and build in. So as far as we're concerned, that those were the campaign promises. Uh, I can't say there wasn't one or two more or one or two less, but that was what uh, I can remember, and that's what I can dig out of the newspapers and, and the information that I have. So um, that's what I'm going to go by tonight. So the first thing I want to point out, and I'm going to go through these kind of rapidly because I have a lot here, but I want you to get a flavor of what I've done. What I've done is I've taken every... Um, every uh, major at, uh, sort of medium um, action that was in the selectmen's meeting, and I sorted into the various categories. So under revenue, I put the vote to, sell, to, uh, to refer the sale of the property on Cary Avenue uh, to the planning and zoning. That was one of the things. Uh, yes, six people voted yes, one voted no. Selectman Perez voted no on that. Uh, vote to direct the purchasing agent, Mark Douglas, to go to bid for the sale. When you sell these properties, that puts that property on the tax roll. Now, some of them might already be on the tax roll, but uh, these are town properties that owns these properties, so they're probably not on the tax uh, roll. But basically, that's why I put them in the revenue area. Then, the next one, this was voted for unanimously. Everybody voted for that. Vote on the recommendation of planning and zoning to uh, adopt the current planning conservation and development and update in small increments over the year, over the years. Uh, that was uh, voted yes by five people. No, Selectman Perez abstained. Selectman Renzullo. Uh, vote to schedule the town meeting for the sale of property located at 324 North Cross Road. That's another one where we get money money for revenue from getting things on a tax roll. Now, some of these properties are small. They're not great increases in the tax uh, base, but they, but they were uh, uh, in the meetings, and they were voted on, so I'm putting them up here because there will be some money coming in from these. Not, not like the big development, not the quantum leap, but this will add to the tax base, uh, hopefully. That was voted on unanimously. Vote to instruct the town manager uh, for Cary Avenue lots again. That's uh, uh, yes, five, two voted no, Renzullo and uh, Perez. When I show you statistics later, you're going to see that in this particular category of revenue, uh, they voted no or abstained quite a bit of the time. Vote to sell the property located at North Cross Road to Gerald Peters uh, for a uh, conservator for Violet Stewart. Um, this is the date these were on, the dates that are on here, the dates of the meetings. Um, and then I put red for campaign commitments. This happens to be a Republican campaign, campaign commitment and cruise revenue uh, was a Republican. All the red are campaign commitments. There are some Democratic reds on here, too, for things like the energy conservation. Vote to schedule a special town meeting for the sale of the property at Norcrest Road. Uh, uh, that was unanimous. And I put yellow on here for the ones that I thought are very, very critical for the town and crucial, and that's what the green means, too. So I wanted to highlight these. Vote to authorize the town manager, Bruce Gredlick, to move ahead with the town planner, Charlie Carno, the senior center director, Ellen uh, Schroeder and the financial director Henry Centrella to begin the implementation of both the conservation and development plan and installation of the doors at the Winstead uh, Senior Center. Uh, the first part of that is very important for our uh, revenue um, and uh, the quantum leap. So that's very important. That's why it's in yellow and that's why I put the green next to it. Again, that was voted for by five. Yes, one. Second Perez, no. 
abstain, Selectman Renzullo. Now again, the wording here and the voting record and everything is right off of the uh, town uh, minutes of the meetings. Um, the, the categories, I put them into the categories, so there might be a little mistake in there, but it won't be very serious. Uh, it's pretty easy to separate them and sort them into these categories. Uh, vote for the town of Winchester to sell property. A motion carried at a special town meeting. Um, and uh, I didn't put any individual votes there because that was a town meeting. Uh, Forty so people showed up at that, I think. Vote to so sell the lots on, on Car Cary Avenue. Yes, for six people, one no, Selectman Perez. Vote to schedule a special town meeting on March 3rd for St. in the St. in the in the uh, P. Francis Hicks room. Um, that lots on Cary Avenue. Uh, that was a unanimous vote to schedule that meeting. So that's kind of it. Those are the revenue uh, things that were on uh, on these uh, last three months worth of meetings, and they're all positive. They were voted on by everybody, one way or the other, and. Uh, they're moving. So now we're going to move to the next section, which is the cost savings. So what are, what are we doing to, to meet these uh, cost savings objectives uh, that uh, the Republicans had? Um, it turns out on cost savings, it's more of an equal balance, a, a little more, a better balance than it was on the revenue when we look at the statistics later. But number one, vote to institute a spending freeze with the exception of the contractual items. That was done 11 1907 That was unanimous. There are about 42 unanimous votes over the three months, and I'll point that out later when we get to the statistics. Vote to add to the agenda for the December 3rd meeting uh, further presentations by Renzullo to uh, show how this solar voltaic cells for power fits in. Now, I put red on that because that was a Democratic campaign commitment, and uh, it was uh, done by the Democrats, so you'll see a D there if you can see it. It's red as well. And that was voted on unanimously. A uh, vote to allow us, uh, that would save us money, of course. Now, that won't happen overnight. That's going to take a long time. This energy stuff takes a long time, but you start out slowly and you evolve over a, a period of 10 years or so, maybe you get into a position where you're saving a lot of money. So I put that into the cost savings because that's mainly what it is. Over time, it will save us money, not initially. Initially, we'll have to spend money on it, but uh, over the long run, uh, we hope to get savings out of that if it all works and it happens, right? So. Um, a vote to allow uh, Selectman Renzullo to work with the town manager, Owen Quinn, at the time and uh, complete the application form as the first step in using solar voltaic cells for power generation, 11 uh, 07. That was ordered on unanimously. Uh, so that application has been filled out, sent in by the town manager, Owen Quinn, and I checked on its progress about a week ago. It's still down there, uh, wherever it was sent to, waiting for a reply. The next one is vote to dissolve the current school building committee. Um, that's all part of the uh, the, the bond, uh, stopping the bond package. Yes, five, no, Selectman Perez, abstain, Selectman Renzullo. If Se Selectman Renzullo, uh, for one reason or another, um, although he wasn't the only new Selectman, he abstained a lot. <laughs> You'll see that when we get to the statistics. He, he abstained more than anybody else here. Uh, now, uh, Vote to appoint a new school building committee. I put that in yellow because that's very important. We have to get out of that, the uh, uh, school com uh, complaints. Here's all the committee members that were appointed. That was voted unanimously. Uh, vote to direct the school building committee to direct their efforts specifically at resolving the OCR complaints as well as the ADA issues and OSHA issues. That was voted on unanimously uh, by, um, by the selectmen. Uh, also charged the school building committee with taking a look at other the other two schools, Hinsdale and Bachelor, as there are some other issues that may be pending, and uh, they also want to consider other issues, but as a secondary charge. That was done on 11-19-07 unanimously. The next one is going to be hard for you to read. I'll even have to put my glasses on to read it because I put blue by mistake on there. But that's the Pearson fuel tank. Um, that's going to save us money because um, the town manager and the selectmen have negotiated this out of uh, a $20,000 uh, potential fine there, uh, providing that they do some other work uh, to make sure the, 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 the two tanks at the other two schools, uh, which that, that, that will, are, will be due to be replaced in 10 years, there's some small work that has to be done there on pipes underground. So I left that on there, and it was voted on unanimously. I put it in blue because it hasn't started yet. 
Um, they haven't started, they're just starting to look at those pipes. Uh, we don't know how much work is there or how much it's going to cost to fix them, but it's a small issue compared to the 20000 I put it in the cost-saving part because we saved $20,000 by negotiating ourselves out of that, out of that uh, potential fine that we've been hearing about for the last two years. Uh, next is number eight. That was voted on unanimously. Um, vote to approve the request of the town manager to hire uh, the new uh, labor council, Victor Michelle. I put that in the cost savings side because we're going to save about $65 an hour here at, at least, unless we use them uh, a heck of a lot more than we have in the past. Um, and uh, w I don't think that's their intention. I think their intention is to use them less than they have in the past. Let the town manager do more of the negotiating and uh, with whoever he needs uh, for help, and uh, and try to keep the use of the, the attorney down, and also try to uh, save the sixty-five dollars an hour when he does work. Uh, that was voted on unanimously. The next was a list of projects remaining on the steep grant. Uh, was distributed. No action was taken on that one, but a list was handed out of the projects remaining on the uh, steep grant, which is for, for uh, cleaning up the uh, park uh, down there. Um, I guess it's called Green Park. I mean, okay, that was voted on. No action. I'm sorry, no action was taken on that. So you can see in that section, there aren't a lot of activities in the cost saving area. Uh, it's always been my contention that uh, cost saving is going to be tough in Winston for the next five years. It's going to be very tough because we're kind of down to the bare bones already. Uh, it's a revenue we need, and that's the thing that's the highest priority and can only cut so much in costs. Um, I'm not saying there's not something to be cut, but you know, inflation is here, things are going up. Uh, um, medical costs are going up uh, for everybody. We have contracts with uh, that we have to honor. Uh, there are state regulations on these kind of things and union regulations and union agreements and everything. So um, we need to concentrate uh, a lot on that revenue piece. Um, okay, that's that. Now, property taxes. We're all interested in property taxes. There was a commitment uh, by the Republicans there to try to keep those under control. Can't say it's all going to happen at once, but uh, um, there's uh, several issues here that are... The, so the first thing was vote to table the tax differ. I put these, by the way, in date order. That's why I say the first thing. But vote to uh, table the tax uh, de deferral uh, program for the elderly until the next meeting. You'll see two or three in a row that say table, 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 because this is one that's been around for quite a while, a year or so, and uh, they're trying to look at it and uh, get more information about it, and it's taken them a while to do that. So I think out of all the – there are very few tables in this whole three months, but this is one of them. Uh, so again, um, these, uh, this was a, a promise both by the Democrats and Republicans who want to help out these uh, elderly people. So I put both Democrat and Republican as campaign promises here. Vote to table a tax deferral plan. That's the next uh, meeting. And then uh, that was uh, unanimous. Both of them were unanimous. And then a vote to table it again for the third time. Uh, to, until they got the information up in, until January for, for, because they're waiting for further information from the town manager, and that was a, unanimous. Then here's the one where they finally made a decision. It's blue again, a little hard to read, but basically this is note to take the program that was put forward, tax deferral program, with a sliding scale of 25 uh, to 50 percent and send it to Kevin Nelligan, a town attorney, to finish the language and bring it back, and then we can get it passed the town manager to still continue researching the program. So that's what's happening now. They sent it to the town manager. He's rewritten it. It's been handed out to all the selectmen, and at the I think the next meeting they're going to look into, uh, you know, uh, look into that. Okay. The next one is, uh, by the way, that was voted on uh, uh, six um, in favor and and one against. That was. Selectman Liskin. Now I want to say something about Selectman Liskin. I remember in his when he was campaigning, he made a promise to never abstain. <laughs> he said that he would always vote. It would either be yes or it would be no. This was during his campaign. I remember him saying it because it stuck in my head because we had so many abstentions last year and we had so many table issues last year. And guess what? For the first three months, he has not abstained. He's voted yes or no on every issue. Um, the next is vote to rescind the resolution made on 1157 to approve an appropriation for 32472 for costs relating to improvements to various town school facilities, including repairs, improvements, and all. This is 
a part of canceling the bond issue. There's a rescind, vote to rescind. That was voted on, yes, by five people. This is a cost saving now because we were going to get it, you know, over 20 years, we were going to get a pretty hefty tax increase uh, here. And um, this is, uh, this. Then I, I put it in the tax section here. Now, we won't be getting, we don't know yet, but uh, we may not be getting all the results that the bond issue was going to offer either right away, but that's something that they're working on to try to, to figure out. But yes, for five people, and no for Selectman Perez, and abstain for Selectman Renzullo. The next one also is part of the bond thing. Revolt to rescind the resolution made 1105 uh, under the last Board of Selectmen um, uh, to approve an appropriation of $10 million, 12000 for costs relating to various improvements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, all part of the bond package. And uh, that is uh, also... Um, for some of the non-school stuff, this has got in it the fire station and uh, the town clerk's office. It's got stuff in it for acquisition of town facilities and equipment, including improvements to the Winston Senior Center, various police and fire safety improvements, acquisition and installation of Ford Diesel, all that kind of stuff, and improvements to Wakefield Boulevard. So at Highland Lake. So all those things are going to be looked at by the new selectmen and, and a plan will be put into uh, place over the years to, to try to do as many of those things as they warrant uh, need need to be done. Um, and there may be being some small bond issues have to be put out to address those. Well, they're going to try to do that minimally as possible on those bond issues. So again, that's that one. The next one is vote to reset. That was, by the way, yes, five, no, Perez, he, uh, abstain, selectman Renzullo. Vote to rescind and, uh, uh, the resolution made on 110507 to authorize the town clerk to prepare and distribute the text regarding all this bond stuff. And that was also, yes, five, no, one, Selectman Perez, and abstain, Selectman Renzullo. Vote to resolve that the special town meeting scheduled at the Gilbert School on December 15, 2007 at the Pearson School is hereby canceled. Uh, yes, five, no, Selectman Perez, abstain, Selectman Renzullo. Vote to dissolve the existing bond commission. Campaign promise of the Republicans. And uh, yes, six, uh, Selectman Renzullo actually voted in favor of that. And uh, abstain, Selectman Perez. Vote to direct the town manager to inform all department heads not to have more than a 3% increase in their directives and keep capital budget as, as well at 3%. Now remember, on my program, I have a much higher uh, upper pressure uh, than that, and it's up around 9.5% or so now. I don't think we'll end up with 9.5%, but, you know, they'll have to do some fancy footwork to keep it uh, down low. So I'm not really expecting we're going to end up at that, but it's a good target. It's a good uh, 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 thing to shoot for and a good uh, benchmark to use so that people, we can see exactly if we go over 3%, exactly why did we go over, what were the reasons for it, and if there's good reasons, we vote for it. If there's not good reasons, then you probably won't vote for it. So that's what's happening there. Now, again, uh, that was voted on, yes, uh, by... Uh, uh, six, uh, Selectman Renzullo was in with the five Republicans on that, and no Selectman Perez. So um, that's the end of that. Uh, now, what I did here in the next section was I threw in everything that wasn't in those three categories, because all the rest of them are um, all actions, I think, there's a bunch of them in there, I think there's about 35, I'll get through as many as I can here uh, in the time frame, but I'm going to go kind of quickly on these, but uh, these are, I put under expedite the decision making for the selectmen and, the and, the, and to get things done for the town to help achieve all these other objectives that we want to do. First one is vote to ratify the agreement with the local uh, 33 dispatchers union that was voted on unanimously. The next one is vote to direct the town manager at the time Owen Quinn to solicit bids uh, for uh, uh, a, a, a licensed uh, town attorney. That all went out. There's a lot of wording here because I got it right out of the minutes. But that, the bottom line is it was voted at unanimously, and we did go out to bid for the town attorney, and that was uh, completed. So that was voted on unanimously. Boards and commissions uh, vote to appoint Richard Laverie to replace the vacancy left by Berlinski on the Inland Wetland Watercourse Commission. Yes, five, no, one, abstain, one. 
uh, vote to table the appointment of Glenn Wynn to fill the vacancy on the Ethics Commission, yes, five, no, two. Um, next was vote to authorize the Tom Andrews sign the third supplemental agreement for uh, with the, with the uh, Connecticut for the non-discrimination needed for the uh, uh, for I got it somewhere in all oh, here it is here the Stowe River Greenway <laughs> it's uh, I know it by art but sometimes you get on television you start to forget these things but anyway this is all positive so we get on with this Greenway be, uh, all the way down along the road between Winston and Torrington and that was done unanimously um, and during one of the meetings on 12307 next was vote to execute the severance agreement with the release with Owen Quinn um, that was uh, yes for six and abstain selectman Perez um, Vote to appoint Bruce Grezik as a town interim uh, town manager on a temporary basis up to February 26th, starting date to be December 4, 2007. Yes, 6, no, 1, Selectman Perez. So that motion passed. I use motion passes here because that's what was in the minutes. And a lot of times they just say, you know, they don't say motion passes. You just have to figure it out for yourself. But on these particular ones, they do. And I'm going to talk to uh, Mrs. Sedlak because I want to understand why sometimes they do that and don't. doesn't matter, but it's something that I'd like to know. Uh, discuss the new town manager hiring approach. Uh, that's uh, That wasn't voted on. They did have a discussion on that. Vote to convene five-person charter revision commission consisting of five members, and there's the members. There are two Democrats, two Republicans, and one unaffiliated uh, to consider Remember the campaign promise of the Republicans here to consider an elected mayoral form of government um, and authorize the mayor or as a dex need to call the organizational meeting and the Leanne Leclerc room for uh, the purpose of electing officers and setting a meeting schedule. Uh, that was done on 12-307. Yes, 5, 2, no. Uh, Selectman Renzullo and Selectman Perez. Um, boards and commissions. Vote to reappoint Raymond Wynn to the Zoning Board of Appeals, unanimous. Vote to reappoint Richard Nolette to the Zoning Board of Appeals and Water and Sewer Commission. He's on both those commissions, and I think he's chairman of both those commissions, so good for him. He's been on a long time, does a good job. Unanimous vote there. Vote to appoint Carol Palumba to the Persons with Disability Commission, unanimous. Vote to appoint Brian Shaughnessy to the Persons with Disability Commission, unanimous. Vote to appoint Glenn Wynn to the Ex Ethics Commission. Uh, this one did fail. Yes to Perez and Renzullo, and uh, no, five. Um, that's the Republicans there. So you can see uh, we get a lot of five to two votes here, or a lot of five to one uh, votes with an abstention, or some five to two abstentions, or whatever. But the mayor appointed various selectmen as liaisons to boards and commissions. I won't go through each here, but I listed them. Here, these are important. That's why I put it in yellow. All these, uh, these board and commission, uh, you can change the whole flavor of the town. It depends on who you appoint as the liaison to these commissions. Uh, if you appoint somebody who who believes in only conservation, then you'll get one uh, flavor from the commissions. If you appoint somebody who believes in a balance of uh, conservation and growth, or if you uh, you'll get a different one. If you appoint somebody who believes in uh, just growth and uh, no conservation, then you get a different view. So it's important on who you appoint to these commissions. They appointed the people they thought. The mayor appoints those. They're not voted on. He just appoints those. So that's done. Uh, vote to approve the Gator Parade as long as all insurance guidelines with the public vehicles are allowed. That was unanimous. Some of these it's pretty hard to vote no against, and most of the unanimous ones are kind of easy compared to the others. Vote to authorize Richard Lynn of uh, Elizabeth Hills uh, uh, Council of Elected Officials. I went to one of their meetings, very interesting and informative, to continue the grant application process for repairs of Newfield Road. Uh, unanimous. Vote to dissolve the Bond Commission. Um, that was uh, yes, six, abstain, Selectman Perez. Vote to dissolve the Winston Fire Department and Police Department, uh, you know, the Police Department and Police Department Capital Planning Ad Hoc Committee. Yes, six, abstain, Selectman Perez. You know, and I, I have been going to a lot of meetings in, other, in another town, in a city actually, and you don't see too many. Um, split votes. Most of them are all well, oh yes or all no and very I only saw one abstention so far down there. But, all right, uh, so uh, 
The next is uh, resolution as a point of clarification. This is more of a resolution, so uh, there was no vote on that one. But it was basically saying, uh, let's let the town manager deal with all the personnel issues as the charter says we should. So that's kind of important. That's why I put it in yellow. Uh, vote to schedule an executive session for a town manager interview. Uh, yes, four. No, three. Selectman Liskin, Selectman Perez, and Selectman Renzullo. Vote to table the discussion on the appointment of attorney Judith Dixon as a town council, uh, 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 town attorney, uh, for the town of Winchester until the next meeting. Uh, yes, six. No, Selectman Perez. Vote to authorize the town manager to sign a Still River Greenway papers unanimously. Okay, you're beginning to get the flavor of these now. I'm going to just leave, put these aside. So there's a whole bunch of things in here that go on for another 15 pages, but I don't think I'm going to have time to go all through them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to the statistics. When I get done with the statistics, if I have any time left, I will then go back here and finish going through these. But if anybody wants to see a copy of all these slides, all the way up to number uh, 36, I think it is, on here, um, then uh, just contact me. I think he's just going to display my uh, my post office box again and my email address, and I'll send you a copy of these. Um, there's nothing secret about them. I can even probably put a copy in the town hall if anybody's interested. But these things cost money to produce, the, the colors and all, and there's no sense putting them in a, to a town hall if nobody's ever going to look at them. So I'd rather see people contact me and then I'd get them a copy. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the voting records on all these and the approximate voting records from November 6th to February 4th. That's the first quarter. Uh, the assumptions I've used here, the everybody's going to say I made a mistake and I should have put this in revenue or that in tax and you know and I admit uh, it'd probably be I'm a human so we're probably going to have one percent error here in these things. Uh, total votes used are 69 and uh, that's the number of, of uh, votes that came up that were that what I call major uh, and, and useful things. Um, the total votes were 69. The total unanimous votes were 52. Uh, four, I'm sorry, 42. 69 total, 42 of them were unanimous. And then not what I haven't counted in, in these numbers are approving the minutes. I didn't vote. I didn't count that in the unanimous. Uh, moving motions. I didn't count those. And vote to adjourn. I didn't count that. Everybody always votes yes to adjourn. <laughs> and then other little small things that might be in there. I didn't include those in these numbers. So I want you to know that now so that you don't call me and say, Brian, you didn't include the adjourns in there. Well, I'm telling you right now, they're not there. So what the statistics now look like are uh, for total number of votes on the whole 69, Mayor for Caso, 25 yeses. Um, and then if you add those to the 42 um, unanimouses that he voted yes on, you get 67. He voted no once, and he voted to abstain on a St. Joseph's uh, school issue because he is chairman of the school building committee at St. Joseph's school. So he couldn't, he had to abstain on that one. Uh, Selectman Berlinski, 24 yeses. Uh, add the 42 yeses that he voted on unanimous votes, and you get uh, uh, 66. And then you, uh, for a total, 42 plus 24, 66. And then he had three no's, and he had zero abstains. These guys don't like to abstain. They like to vote, so they vote. Uh, Liskin, 24 in the yes column. Add that to the 42, you get 66. And then there were three no's on his behalf, and as I said earlier in the program, zero abstains. Uh, I put Cappy here. I apologize to select and Kevin Bianca, but I, I couldn't fit Kevin Bianca in here and still get this chart the way I wanted it. So I put Cappy in there. I apologize to him for that, but uh, he's well known around town as Cappy, so maybe he won't be too worried. But 24 yeses, 66 altogether when you include the 42, and three no's and no abstains. Uh, Selectman Ham, 24. Uh, add the 42, he gets 66. Three no's and zero abstains. Selectman Renzullo, uh, 12 uh, yeses, add the 42, when you get up to 54, you get five no's and 10 abstains. Uh, Selectman Perez, down here at the bottom of the pile, she gets six yeses, quite a difference between 
the six yeses here and the 25 yeses here and the 24 yeses here and the 24 here and the 24 here and the 24 and even the 12 here. Uh, so you got a major difference right here in this party. But if you had to take six, add it to the, uh, uh, the 42, you get 48, and you got 18 no's, and you got three abstains. So that's how these votes break down for the first three months. I'm hoping it's going to be a little different in the second three months. And, uh, you know, we did have a little rocky start there but uh, because of the bond issue. But um, let's hope uh, that improves. Okay, now, what I did next was um, I did a percentage number for you so you could see the percentages. Because percentages tend to bring things out clearly. Same numbers back there. I put zero here because when you get down to zero in the... Uh, when you get down to these kind of low numbers and you do your percentages, they come out to 0 .001 or 0 .00 or point, you know, they come out to small fractions. So I just put zero there for those uh, because they weren't enough to really matter. So you got 97%, the other 3% falls in these categories. Uh, you got 96%, 96%, 96%, the yes column, 96, 78 here and 70 here. So. Uh, that's uh, how those percents go. Now, when you look in the nose, you got 26% down here. You got, you know, close to 0% here. You can make it one if you want to, or whatever. And then uh, uh, you got 1% uh, here on the no column. So uh, now, when you go over to the abstains, you can see where Selectman and Zula stands out like a sore thumb here with 14%. So I apologize if these are a little off, but I didn't want to get into point .00s and things like that in here. So I thank you very much for putting up with that. This gives you a rough idea. It isn't perfect, but uh, you can get a rough idea which way things are going. If you want to, you can get the, all the information from the town clerk and do your own calculations, and then you'll know for sure. Now, I broke it down by category as well. For revenue, you have... Um, uh, for Caso, voted 10 yes, no zero, abstain zero. Berlinski, 10 yes, no zero, abstain zero. Liskin, 10 yes, no zero, abstain zero. Capabianca, 10 yes, no zero, abstain zero. Now this is very important now because this is our first priority for the Republican Party is revenue and I think for the town. So and I, a lot of people agree with me on that and statistics bear that out. We really need this revenue. So that's a pretty good voting record for people that are trying to get revenue in town no matter how big or small it is. And as you know and some of those revenue things were pretty big because uh, they had to do with uh, the development up on uh, and the, and the development down the uh, Enterprise Corridor and up in the uh, hills around the uh, Enterprise Corridor. Uh, uh, Selectman Renzullo, six yes when it came to revenue, two no's, and two abstains. Selectman Perez, four yeses. That's 40 percent. Six no's. That's 60 percent. <laughs> Not well, 40 percent, six, seven, eight. I think I got a mistake here because it's supposed to only be 10. So, sorry uh, for the next I made a mistake here. So either that, let's give her benefit of the doubt here and say there were uh, there were only uh, there were uh, no's uh, and abstains have to only be six one way or the other. So let's let's knock this down to four on the no side. Uh, I'll double check that and make sure it's right. But uh, I did a mistake on, on when I added these numbers up. They should add up to 10. Like the all the rest of them add up to 10. All right, so let's say that's a 4. So we'd have 4, 4, and 2. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be a 6, that's for sure. All right, the next one is cost savings. And that is uh, for Caso, 8, 0 no's, 0 abstains. Berlinski, 8, 0, 0. Liskin, 8, no no's and no abstains. Cap, Bianca, 8, 0, 0. And Mike, uh, Michael Ham, Jr., 8, 0, 0. Uh, now you can see here on the cost savings side, we're a little more in harmony. Um, Renzullo, 7, in favor, yes. 0, no, and 1 abstain. 
Selectman, uh, Prez, uh, seven yes, one no, and uh, well, uh, zero abstain. So everybody seems to be pretty in sync that, you know, we need to be very uh, diligent on our cost savings uh, here. Okay, the next is property taxes. Mayor for Caso, 10. No no's and no abstains. Selectman Berlinski, 10. No no's and no abstains. Uh, Selectman Liskin, 9 yeses. Uh, one uh, no and one abstain. Uh, Capabianca, Selectman Capabianca, 10 yeses. One uh, zero and uh, one uh, uh, no abstain. I'm sorry, no. Uh, zero no's and zero abstains. Selectman Ham, 10 yeses, zero no's, and zero, one abstain, uh, zero abstains. Uh, Selectman Renzullo, seven yeses, um, one no, zero no's, and one abstain. And Selectman Perez, seven yeses, one no, zero abstain. So this is more in balance, although uh, we've got like uh, 70% here and a 70% here, and more like 100%, 90%, and 200%. So we're uh, we're closer there than we were on the revenue. It stands out like a sore thumb here on the revenue side, um, and we need to really improve on that. We need to get everybody trying to get revenue into the town and uh, get more balance into that. Expedite the solution. I didn't get a chance to go through every single one, uh, but. Uh, uh, Fricasso, uh, Mayor Fricasso was 36, yes, one no, and one abstain. Selectman Berlinski was 36, yes, two no, and zero abstains. Selectman Liskin was 36, yes, two no, and zero abstain. Selectman Capabianca, 36, yes, two no's, and zero abstain. Selectman Ham, 36, two yes, two no, and zero abstain. Selectman Renzullo, 33, yes, three no, and two abstain. And Selectman Perez, 29, yes, six no's, and three abstains. Now, the thing I want to point out here is that Statistics are statistics, and they give you a rough idea how everybody votes. It doesn't mean that somebody who voted no a few times is, is right or wrong. Um, that's one of the problems with statistics. And you have to go in and see what they're voting on, what are the issues. And they may be, right, may be right on a particular issue when they vote no, or when they, I don't really agree with abstaining. I think uh, decision makers have to make decisions. And my own view is abstaining is kind of a cop-out. Now, if you abstain because the, uh, for legal reasons, because you're the chairman of a subcommittee uh, and they're voting on an issue from that subcommittee, well, that you have to do. There's no choice there. So uh, that's the thing you have to do. Uh, but normally, we should be making decisions on these things, doing our homework, and then coming up with a vote. So I would like to see no abstains in the future, unless they're for legal reasons, and, uh, and you have to do it. And um, then, of course, we want to see more votes in harmony wherever we can. But we do have to realize that when some people vote no, they have a uh, good reason for it, and they might, might even be right. But in a, in a bigger scheme of things, the laws of probability say that, you know, if you're voting no too often or you're abstaining too many times, then, um, you know, um, we should look at it and probably think about it, especially at election time. So you have to make up your own mind on that. And you see the meetings. You see how they go. And you, you, uh, you can decide. So what I'm going to do, uh, if able, I'm going to keep on doing the programs and every two weeks reporting on the progress of the meetings. There'll be plenty to do over the next three months. The next three months, statistics are going to be very interesting because we've got the budget to go through, not only the town budget, but the school budget in a time when almost no revenue increase is going to happen. Can't count the, uh, the revalue because that doesn't really give additional revenue to the town uh, uh, unless the taxpayers pay more taxes. 
um, because uh, it's only increasing the value, the assessed values. It's not adding new revenue to the town. So the new revenue that's been added to the town over the last year, I would say, is probably going to be, when we see the statistics uh, when the budget, uh, around budget time, you're going to see that's going to be a lot less than perhaps anybody's even even thinks uh, because of uh, uh, the fact that not that many permits are ta been taken out this year uh, and uh, not that many new businesses have moved to town this year, that kind of thing. Now, there'll be some new revenue, of course, uh, for additions on homes, new homes, new businesses, mm -hmm. things, but it won't be enough to satisfy perhaps the needs that we have on the cost side for, from, you know, insurance is going up, salaries going up, uh, needs of the town that have to be met um, for legal reasons, needs of the town that have to be met for uh, sanity reasons, you know, uh, uh, and keeping uh, the town safe, all those kind of things. So all those are going to come up over the next three months. So we're going to get a real test here on this Board of Selectmen and on the taxpayers because it won't be um, easy for anybody. But uh, we have to face these issues, and at the same time, we've got to try to expedite the solution on getting more revenue into town. More people got to pay attention to it. They've got to do their homework. They got to deal with, get the facts, and deal with the facts. Now, I have been reading a lot of articles in the papers recently, and there's a lot letters to the editor and all kinds of things, and they don't have the right facts in them. You know, uh, they have uh, sort of emotional type things, and. Uh, we do, some of them do, of course, have some good facts in, too, and you've got to be careful. Uh, but a lot of people who write these letters don't attend the, the meetings, and they don't really get the facts. So uh, we're going to have to be pay close attention on the facts. Now, the other thing on the cost-saving side is we have long-term costs here. Although a great deal of our costs are, especially on the school side, are in, um, in the people costs. You know, I don't know exactly what the number is on the school side, but it's pretty high. It's up to like 70, 80 percent of the total costs there. So that's pretty expensive. And then we also have uh, costs uh, for the town, uh, say 50, 60 or whatever, some percent in that area. Plus we have a lot of equipment in town that we have to maintain and keep up. We have a lot of uh, uh, other things we have to spend money on uh, uh, to keep the town safe and uh, and uh, viable. So that's going to happen, and inflation is going to happen. We're spending more on fuel, as you know. We're spending more on all kinds of things because of the cost of fuel, and, uh, and uh, costs are rising, health care costs are rising. So we have to, and these are long-term commitments we have with unions and with uh, other things, and there are state mandates that uh, require us to spend money without uh, any uh, uh, getting any money in return. So a lot of things. So it's going to be kind of tough. It's going to be an interesting three months, and we're going to uh, we're going to get a new town manager here over the next uh, uh, week or two. I'm hoping, um, and uh, the existing uh, uh, interim town manager, uh, who is and, and from what I can gather, and everybody else can gather, is doing a very very good job. I haven't heard one bad news about the new interim town manager. Not one piece of bad news about him, and not only from here, but from around the state where he's worked before. So uh, we're very, very lucky to have uh, obtained his services. I think he's going to be here roughly until the middle of March, maybe the end of March, and uh, he's going to help the new town manager get through the budgeting process, or at least get into the budgeting process, and uh, and then be available probably on the phone if, uh, if, if help is needed, and consult consultation or whatever. Uh, for a while, and then the new town manager will be off and running, and uh, he'll be moving the to town. I don't know. All I know is what I read in the paper about the new town manager. It looks like there's uh, contractual negotiations going on with one of the people, and uh, should he uh, accept that information uh, uh, that's in the contract and accept the terms, and uh, everything comes together, and uh, selectman on on the next uh, selectman meeting. Um, or uh, whatever, will be uh, voting to uh, hire the new town manager, and then he'll be in, and uh, he'll have to wade into this whole thing, and uh, he'll have to be brought up to speed and brought up to date, and at the same time, we don't want to lose any momentum, so it's going to be quite a chore for the selectmen and all the people in town that work for the town and all the taxpayers and everybody to understand that this is going to take time. Uh, it's a necessary step. We have to do it. 
Meanwhile, we've got the Charter Revision Commission, which is looking at this whole form of government and the mayoral form versus the town management form. So all that is going to be happening in parallel. And uh, we, uh, as we move now uh, towards success, which is going to take four or five years to do, I just want to make uh, my uh, same old worn-out plea to everybody. Uh, thank you for electing these people. Um, let's hope we can get... Uh, their, give them their, our support. They're probably going to need it for four or five years. We don't want to have any major interruptions, uh, some evolutionary changes along the way. That's good. But uh, we don't want to go through a big major change in the next election. So your responsibility as citizens and my responsibility uh, is to keep aware of what's happening, keep up to date, form your own opinions, and then try to help everybody. And I would say the biggest area we need help in, the biggest area, is in the image of the town to the outside world. We really need to have positive letters written to the newspapers, not negative ones. We don't need to be talking on television about all the problems we have in our school system. We don't need to be talking on television about um, some of the problems we have with developers. We need to be talking positively. We need to solve all the other problems, of course, and discuss them in, together, and um, I don't want to, again, uh, eliminate uh, freedom of information or freedom of the press. But on the other hand, we have to be sensible and we have to make sure that uh, we, we do project a positive image because we want more children to come to our schools. We want more people to come to our town. We want businesses to come to our town. We want guests to come to our town from around the state. Uh, we want students to come to our town. So the more we can all say positively about it. So what you have to do is if you see anybody writing letters or anybody being negative, uh, then try to correct them. Try to coach them. Try to help them to understand the reasons and try to understand what we have to do to, 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 to glow in the community, glow in the state, and make sure everybody likes our town and wants to help us and we want to help them. So with that, I'll say once again, thank you for watching the program, and it's past my bedtime. Um, I'll be on again next week. <laughs>